So it's now time to start setting up identity in our application. And what we're going to start with inside our domain. So we're going to create a new C Sharp class and this is going to be called App User. And we want to make use of ASP.NET Core Identity. And specifically we want to derive from the Identity User class inside our domain model here. Now the problem is that we don't actually have access to the framework class that we need for this. So what we're going to need to do, and even though this is our domain project and whilst I would like to keep this completely clean of dependencies, in this particular circumstance it's unavoidable because we have to use this identity user class and derive from this inside this particular project. To make this completely clean, we would need to move identity out of the project entirely and possibly use something like identity server or a different project specifically for identity, but that would overcomplicate what we're doing here. And what we want to do is just use our app user inside our domain models. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the NuGet package manager and add a package. And what we want to add here is Microsoft dot ASP net core dot identity and dot entity framework core and press return and this is the package that we want to install and once again make sure this is the same version that you've been using throughout this particular course and I'm going to pick the one that matches the runtime, which is 2.2.0, or 2.2 .2 in this case. The 3.0.01s are for the preview version of .NET Core 3.0. So I'm going to select 2.2.0, and we want to add this to our domain project. And once this is done, we'll use the Restore button to add this into our project. And once this has complete, we should be able to use the quick fix to bring in Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity. So if we take a look at the identity user class and see what we get from this, first of all, it uses a string as a primary key. By default, we can change this if we want and use an integer, but this string is actually a GUID and it's converted to a string rather than using the GUID object. And if we take a look at the identity user class itself, then we'll see all of the different properties that are available that we get inside this particular class that we're deriving from. So we'll have access to all of these properties just by the nature that we're deriving from the identity user class. Now, we're also going to be using a password hash inside here. And this gets or sets a salted and hashed representation of the password for this user. So we don't need to worry about the security of our passwords because it's already going to be hashed and it's going to be salted. So even if two users have the same password, they will have a different password hash because it's going to be salted and then hashed before being saved into our database. There's also a flag indicating if a user has confirmed their email address. We're not going to be looking at confirming of email addresses whilst we're developing this application. That is something that will be covered later on, but we're not going to be taking a look at it right now. Other properties we get inside here is the email address and a username property and an ID property. And there's also other flags as well, such as whether or not we want to lock out this account. And for instance, if the user had failed a number of password attempts, then we can set the account to be locked out. So we get lots of properties available by using the identity user class, but there's one that we don't have in there that we want to add. So we're going to extend this class for our purposes, and all we're going to do at the moment is just add a string of display name for our app user. And this is the name that we'll display in our application for the particular user in various aspects of our, our client side app. Now with this in place, what we want to do next is go to our persistence project and to our data context file. And currently we're driving from the DB context, but there's a special version of this for identity 
called identity db context and that's what we'll derive from here and we'll also need to add as a type our app user and what we'll need to do is we'll need to bring in Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity Entity Framework Core and because we specify the app user here we don't need to add this as a DB set inside our class. Now there's one more thing we need to add at this stage otherwise we're going to get an error and we also need to add the base dot on model creating and pass in our builder here and this allows us when we create our migration to give our app user a primary key of a string and if you don't add this in then we'll definitely see an error now with this in place what we can do is we can add a new migration so I'm just going to open my terminal window and I don't have any instances of .NET running at this moment and we will need to stop our application in order to run the .NET EF command and what we'll do we'll say .NET EF migrations add and then we'll just say added identity and then we need to specify our persistence project just as we've done before and our API as well and let's press return and this should complete successfully so let's go and take a look at the migration that we've just added and inside Explorer inside my migrations folder let's take a look at what we're adding here and in our rep method we can see we're creating a table called ASP.NET roles another table called ASP.NET users and this table contains all of the properties for our app user including the display name which we added ourselves to our app user class and the rest of them are all the other properties that we saw when we looked at the definition we're also going to get a table for role claims and user claims and user logins, user roles, user tokens and all of this is available simply by deriving from the identity user class and using the identity DB context. So the only table that we're really going to interact with is the ASP.NET users table because this is going to contain all of our users and this is what we'll be using in the, in the main parts. So what we'll do is we'll run our application, we'll cd into the API and I'll just say .NET watch run and this is going to go ahead and apply that migration and add all of those tables into our SQLite database and if I go and take a look at the database and I'll just open up SQLite and say open database and choose the reactivities DB and go back into Explorer and take a look at my SQLite database now I can see all of these tables have been added so far so good what we're going to look at next is how we can configure ASP.NET's identity for our particular application and we'll take a look at that next